Let's learn the general method to draw any regular polygon given the length of one of its sides. Let's start by drawing a straight horizontal line at the bottom of our screen. So now, on the left side of this line, we are going to mark a point A. We are going to set our compass to the given length L on the top left hand side of our screen and transport this length to our line onto our line, setting our compass on point A and scribing an arc to form point B as can be seen here in the video. So now we have our line segment AB which will be the base of our polygon. So now we are going to draw a regular hexagon given the length of one of its sides L. The next step with our compass set on the point A and radius AB we draw an arc to the left. With the same radius and our compass set on point B, we scribe an arc to the right which will intersect our previously drawn arc at point zero, which is going to be the center point of the circumference we are going to circumscribe our hexagon. So here we can see our circumference. To continue using the given measurement of the side L, which is the same as the radius of the circle, setting our compass on point B, we will scribe an arc to the right to cut the circle, which will be the next vertex of our hexagon. So now we are going to continue this process, marking the rest of the vertices of our regular hexagon. So as can be seen here, we set our compass on our previously scribed arc and scribe the next arc. And again, setting our compass on the previously scribed arc, we scribe our next arc. And if we have been working with accuracy, our last arc should cut point A exactly as can be seen here in the video. It's not strictly necessary to draw this hexagon, but as it's our first time drawing this general method, it will help us to better understand it. Thereafter, we will, there will be no need to draw the hexagon. So following on from this, we will join our vertices using a set square or ruler to complete the hexagon. So here we can see our 45 degree set square. We used to join the vertices. And finally, we join the last vertices to point A to complete our hexagon. So now that we have the hexagon, the next step is to draw a line perpendicular to our side AB and through the center zero of our circle and we will prolongate this line above and below the circle as can be seen here in the video. Where this line cuts the circle below the side AB, we will call this point T. Now the next step is to divide the radius OT into six equal parts using Thales theorem. The first step is to draw a line starting from point T on the circle at any angle as shown here in the video. Now using our compass which we will set to a certain length one centimeter or two centimeters and we will proceed to scribe six arcs on this line using the compass as shown in the video. We can also do this using a ruler. There's our third arc now our fourth, now we scribe our fifth arc. Here you have the sixth division. Theoretically, we are finished, but we are going to continue scribing another four arcs. We will explain this motive later on in the exercise. So now we will proceed to mark four more. Arc seven.
And finally, the last arc, 10. So now we have 10 arcs. We are now going to number each of these arcs from 1 to 10. As can be seen here in the video. Now the next step is to join the 6th arc to point 0 on our radius OT as shown. And from now on we will draw parallel segments to the previous junction as shown in the video through successive marks drawn below previously. To do this, I use a 45 degree set square with a protractor in its center with the software we use to record these videos. But you should do it with a 45 degree and a 90 degree set square. These parallel lines will divide our radius in six equal parts as shown. And we will continue the process marking four more parallel lines above from point 7 to 10. So here we have our seventh parallel, our eighth, our ninth, and finally our tenth parallel. These extra four divisions, we will name them C7, C8, C9, and C10 as can be seen here in the video. C7 would be the center point of a seven-sided polygon with side AB. Furthermore, C8 would be the center point of an eight-sided polygon with the given side AB, and the same goes for points C9 and point C10. And conversely, the points below the origin zero, which would be called C5, C4, and C3 would also be the center points of a five-sided, a four-sided, and a three-sided polygon given the length AB. And with this method, we can draw the po we can draw polygons with any amount of sides. Normally, all the parallel lines we have drawn in today's example are not necessary. This is just to show you the method. The only parallel lines necessary are the sixth one and the number of sides of the polygon you wish to draw. In today's example, we are going to draw a nine-sided polygon, so the center point we'll be interested in is C9. So now, with our compass set on point C9 and length C9A or B, we will draw the circle, as can be seen here, which passes through both points A and B. If we have been working with accuracy up to this point, the length AB should fit into our circumference exactly nine times. So now with our compass set to the length AB, we are going to scribe nine arcs onto our circumference. It can be noted that in all odd sided polygons where the vertical diameter intersects the circumference, this point will always be a vertex. So this can tell us if we are working with accuracy or not. Here's our fourth arc that we're going to describe. And now with our compass set on the previously described arc, we describe our fifth arc, which passes through our perpendicular line exactly, which tells us that we are working with accuracy. Now we continue describing our sixth arc. Seventh, our 
All right. And finally, our ninth arc should cut exactly through point A if we are working with accuracy, as can be seen here in the video. So now we have all the nine vertices of the polygon, and we will proceed to name them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And now we will join them to complete our nine-sided polygon. So we join from A to B using our set square, our ruler, from C to B. Joins from D to C. From D to E. From E to F. From vertex G to F. From G to H. H to I and finally we will close our nine-sided polygon by joining vertices A to I. So now we have our nine-sided polygon given the length of one of its sides. I hope this video has helped you. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to our channel or click like. Thank you.